Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to go over an infinitely repeated version of the Bertrand model. In this example we have a demand function of q equals 100 minus 2p and a cost function of 20qi for each of the firms. In this market we have six firms. This means that i can go anywhere from 1 to all the way up to 6. And all these firms are exactly the same. They produce an identical product and they have the same cost function. Remember the rules of the Bertrand model are that firms choose prices simultaneously. The firm who picks the lowest price will sell to the entire market at that price. Everyone else will sell nothing. If there's a tie, then those firms who are tied for the lowest price will split the market equally. The first thing that we will look at is what would happen in our stage game if it is only played once. If it's only played once, then firms always have an incentive to undercut each other and take the whole market. That will continue and drive the price down all the way to marginal cost. The marginal cost here, of course, is the derivative of the cost function, which is just 20 for all of the firms. So in the one-shot version, our Bertrand price, I'll call that P Bert, equals 20. The market quantity is going to be 100 minus 2 times 20, which is 40, uh, gives us 60. That means that each individual firm will produce an output of 60 divided by 6, or 10. How much profit are they making? Well, the price is 20, marginal cost is 20, they're making zero on every single unit. So as we expect, the profit is going to be zero for each firm. Now let's look at what would happen if the firms were able to collude. When firms collude, then they are going to behave as a monopoly. So we're going to figure out what a monopolist would do. Since our demand function is 100 minus 2p, we solve that for p to get the inverse demand function. I will add 2p to both sides and subtract q from both sides, then divide by 2 to get my inverse demand function, p equals 50 minus q over 2. I will now set up the monopolist profit function, which is pi equals price times quantity. That's going to be our revenue, so 50 minus q over 2 times quantity of q minus total cost of 20q. Take the first order condition, get 50 minus q minus 20 equals 0 solve for q and I get a monopoly quantity of 30. Plug that into our inverse demand function right here to get p equals 50 minus 30 over 2 so our monopoly price is 35. If all six firms are able to collude then they would all set a price of 35. According to the rules of the model if they all set the same price then they're going to split the output equally. Our total monopoly output is 30 so our collusive quantity is going to be 5. Profits that firms make from colluding, price times quantity, 35 times 5, minus cost, so 20 times 5, which gives us 75. As we expect, if the firms are able to collude, they're going to make more profit than they would if they were to compete. Of course, 75 is better than zero, so they prefer to collude. The problem with that in the one-shot setting is that they are unable to. They always have an incentive to undercut, and that's going to drive that price all the way down to 20. To take the entire market, a single firm could slightly undercut 35 and sell to the entire market of 30 at that point. If you want to say that it's something like 34.99, you can... I typically just call it close enough to 35. That's going to give us a defection profit of 35 times 30 minus 20 times 30. We're selling to the entire market of 30 for a price just a tiny amount under 35, so it's negligibly close basically. And that's going to give us a profit of 450. This gives us all the information we need to know to figure out if it's possible to sustain a cooperative Nash equilibrium in an infinitely repeated setting. In the infinitely repeated Bertrand model, every single period, all six firms are going to choose their price simultaneously. 
After each period is over, they observe what happened, collect their profits, and we move on to the next period. This is going to allow us to set up a Grim Trigger strategy. Grim Trigger strategies always have three parts. First part, you always cooperate in the initial period. So in our example, that is going to be to set the monopoly price in the initial period. The next part of it is we continue to set the monopoly price of 35 as long as all other firms have also set P equals 35 in all previous periods. The final part of the Grim Trigger strategy says that we set the Bertrand price, which is P equals 20, if any firm has ever set a price other than 35. For any of the firms playing Grim Trigger, they're only going to set price equal 35 in the initial period and then any subsequent period as long as no one has ever deviated. As soon as one of the five does anything other than 35, then they're going to go all the way to 20 to punish them for all time. Now we want to see if all players playing the Grim Trigger strategy can support a cooperative Nash equilibrium. We're going to use these profits we calculated earlier to see what is the total present value of the payoffs for following Grim Trigger and for defecting. I'll use a big capital pi for our total value. So for colluding, that is following the Grim Trigger strategy, we're going to be doing 75 forever. According to the Grim Trigger strategy, you set a price of 35 initially. Everybody's going to do that, and we continue doing that as long as everybody else is. And if everybody's doing Grim Trigger, we're going to get that every single period, which is going to give us that 75 payoff every period. We'll get 75 now, and in next period we'll get 75 discounted by 1 plus R for the present value. Two periods from now we get 75 over 1 plus R squared, and so on forever. This comes out to 75 plus 75 over R, based on our geometric series formula. Next we figure out what happens if we defect. For defecting, we're going to get 450 initially, but then what's going to happen? In all the subsequent periods, all the Grim Trigger players will punish you by setting a price of 20 and no one makes profit after that. So we're going to get 0 and 0 and so on forever, which of course is just going to be 450. This means that collusion is possible in this model if 75 plus 75 over R is greater than or equal to 450. This means that by playing Grim Trigger, you cannot improve your payoff by defecting. Subtract 75 from both sides. We get 375. Now solve for R. We get R less than or equal to 75 over 375, which is R less than or equal to 0.2 which is 20%. Remember that as the interest rate goes up, these future payoffs are worth relatively less. When the interest rate is low, those future payoffs are worth more. 20% is the break-even point between getting 75 forever and getting that instant burst of 450. And that is the cooperative Nash equilibrium in an infinitely repeated Bertrand game. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks for watching.